Hello, and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Shanna Fold, here with ILTV's Morning Brief. In a surprise decision on Friday, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu appointed the head of the New Right Party, Naftali Bennett, to be defense minister. And the cabinet voted to approve Bennett's appointment on Sunday, which means the Likud and the New Right will now be forming a joint faction for the 22nd Knesset. But the snap decision seems mainly intended to impede rival Benny Gantz coalition talks, as Netanyahu looks to solidify the ranks behind his right-wing bloc. Likud member of Knesset Sahi Hanegbi even admitted as much over the weekend. In response to the move, though, blue and white officials blasted the prime minister for appointing a temporary placeholder to the most sensitive establishment in the state. Similarly, the Democratic Union Party called Bennett unworthy of the position and called Netanyahu undemocratic. Meanwhile, on Saturday, wild card and so-called kingmaker from the Israel Beitenu party, Avigdor Lieberman, gave both Netanyahu and Gantz an ultimatum, agree to President Rivlin's shared unity plan, or else. He explains that both Netanyahu and Gantz must meet and make compromises, and that whoever makes the wrong decision, quote, we will support the other side, end quote. Continuing to shore up support amongst the right, however, Netanyahu has already rejected Lieberman's ultimatum, saying he's bluffing with no cards to play. While most Israelis typically use their weekend to relax, hundreds just spent the last few hours of their Saturday defending Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu over charges of corruption. But though the leader has not yet formally been indicted or charged, Prosecutor Shai Nitzan is calling on Attorney General Mandelblit to conduct a thorough investigation, accusing the Prime Minister of fraud and breach of trust for accepting pricey gifts. Netanyahu has denied all the accusations, maintaining his innocence and accusing the Israeli media of conducting a witch hunt in order to upseat him from power. And protesters are demonstrating on his behalf. This isn't the first protest, though, as demonstrators have made this a routine for a handful of weeks and have also collected outside of Manzelblit's home in Petak Tikva. They say the way Netanyahu and his close friends and colleagues are being interrogated is simply unfair. Nearly a thousand people showed up for the event with a number of lawyers and advocates speaking. Protesters waved Israeli flags and brought homemade signs. But a highlight was the band hired to entertain the crowd. We here at ILTV think it's not the worst addition to a Saturday evening protest. On March 25, 2019, United States President Donald Trump made history in recognizing the Golan Heights as Israeli territory. Israel seized the southern Golan from Syria in the 1967 war. And this event marked the first time the United States publicly supported the move. Well, as a thanks for the presidential proclamation, Israel announced the formation of a new Golan community called Trump Heights. And on Thursday, the town started receiving its first residents, several hundred underprivileged teenagers who arrived to inaugurate a new pre-IDF boarding school. The school, headed by Uriel Eldad, will be run under the Mechinat Shahar network of pre-army high schools, and it will serve as home for its students during the six months prior to their enlistments. Also, it will be accepting students from all religious backgrounds. The IDF Preparatory Boarding School won't be alone in the area for too long, though. About 20 families are planning to move to Trump Heights in the summer of 2020, with more expected to follow. And finally, as odd as it may sound, Trump Heights is actually the second Israeli town to be named for a U.S. president, the first being Kfar Truman in central Israel. Now, you may not know it, but Israel sits right along the Great Rift Valley, a fault line that travels down the length of the Jordan River. And any amateur geologist will tell you that it means our Earth shakes. In fact, since the start of November, there have been five earthquakes in the region, four of which hit Israel directly. But there's good news and bad news. The good news is that, thankfully, most of the quakes in Israel have only averaged out 2.5 on the Richter scale, with very few even being felt. But the bad news is that a larger, more devastating earthquake is expected around the corner. According to seismic experts, it's estimated that once every 100 years, a devastating quake occurs along this rift. And the last major quake was 92 years ago on July 11th, 1927. That's all for now. Follow us on Facebook at Israel English News and on Twitter at ILTV News. I'm Shanna Fold, and I'll see you later with our main daily broadcast in Israel from 2 p.m. Eastern Time.